MacBook Air. Um, am I still, can you still not hear me? I will um, try to continue talking. Okay, okay. Thank you for bringing it up. Uh, great, great, great. Many of you can hear me now. That's great. Thank you again for bringing it up so I could change it. I will start again. Welcome uh, to the Fleet Forum Wednesday webinar with today's topic is the Green Fleet Manager. Sustainability and especially environmental sustainability is high on the agenda um, of most organizations, so most of your organizations as well. Uh, uh, many of the organizations already set objectives and the ones who have not set objectives are looking into what they would like to achieve in the coming years because sustainability is a topic that is, let's say, very much on the agenda because of a lot of pressure from outside, but also a lot of pressure from inside where organizations do realize that sustainability is extremely important for the future of all organizations. So today we're going to talk about environmental sustainability and the role of the fleet manager and how, what is your role in your organization um, to support achieving the objectives related to environmental sustainability. Well, let's quickly look at how we define sustainability actually. Yeah? So sustainability is operating uh, in a way that it meets the meeting the needs of the present, of today, what is needed today within the organization or as the world or as individual people, as organizations, without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. In other words, we can't take more from the planet, from people, from nature, uh, from the environment, than the environment the people can absorb, so to speak. So we can, we should keep the environment in which we operate, it's the people around us, it's the planet around us in the same shape as we, let's say, started when we started working with this planet. So we should not take too much of the planet in a way that the future generations um, uh, cannot, let's say, meet their own needs anymore. That is it, what in a nutshell is sustainability. And then normally we look at three types of sustainability, environmental sustainability, economic sustainability, and social sustainability. Today, we will focus specifically on um, environmental sustainability as one of the major topics within sustainability. Uh, and it's good. I already see that some people uh, uh, introduced themselves. That's great. If you can let indeed everyone know um, your name, uh, from what organization you are, what your role is, and what country you're based, it's good to see that everyone knows um, who's in this webinar as well. If during the webinar you have specific questions, please use the uh, Q&A, uh, the Q&A mode. There's a question mark uh, at the bottom. If you click that, uh, then you can raise a question that makes it easier for me in the end uh, to answer your questions and publish it on the screen or show it on the screen. So sustainability. We think that there's no future for organizations that will not be sustainable. sustainable. Uh, if you don't get your sustainability in order, we think that you will out of business, so to speak, in the future. So even if you don't care, eh? some people do not care about the impact that we as humans have on the planet. And even if that is the case, there's still a lot of reasons to invest in sustainability, to work on sustainability. Let me give you some reasons here. And we don't get into detail because that's not, let's say, the, the purpose of today's goal. But to give you, let's say, some ideas to think about and why should you still care uh, about sustainability um, because it has some advantages. You know, if you really work on your sustainability practices, your organization will be more effective. It will increase employee engagement. People 
like a lot of people, like to work for an organization that takes sustainability very seriously and actively works on that. It makes people happy to work for an organization like that. It will improve your reputation as an organization. Uh, people will say, whoa, okay, that organization does a very good job on sustainability. Uh, so it will improve your reputation towards beneficiaries, for example, but always also to, towards uh, funders, towards donors, uh, because especially donors um, have an important role to play. You will have a better position towards donors if you work harder on your sustainability practices. It will also reduce road crashes, which might sound strange, but it does. If you really work on your sustainability, you will have less kilometers driven, you have safer kilometers driven, and of course also cleaner, but it will have an impact on your road crashes as well. And last but definitely not least, it will generate cost savings. Let me just pick one out of this. Uh, and that's the role of donors. What we see more and more that donors start putting requirements on organizations they fund. Actually, they, what they say is, if you don't meet our requirements related to environmental standards, then you will not be do not get funding from us anymore. A, one example, a very specific one, uh, the minimum environmental requirements uh, and recommendations of uh, DG ECHO, uh, the, the eight arm of the European Union, they published last year a set of requirements related to um, sustainability with a very detailed chapter around fleet management as well. And what they say, as from this year, these requirements are mandatory. If you do not, let's say, comply with our minimum standards, minimum requirements, then in the future, you will not receive funding from ECHO anymore. So that's a very strong reason to really look into your sustainability practices, not just because you like it, uh, but because it's needed, because it is, like we said, a future license to operate because donors will not fund organizations anymore if they do not make a step up in sustainability. Good to say, probably already all, almost all realize it, but still, uh, sustainability is not a hype. It's not something that will, uh, that will be away in a year from now. It's not a campaign. Uh, it's just the way you do business. It's just the way you operate your organization. It's a business as usual, actually, what you would say. This is the way that you operate. In your thinking, uh, in your planning, in your recruiting, uh, in your communication, in everything you do, you need to take into account, how can I do it in the most sustainable way? So again, it's not the sustainability department of your organization who has to deal with it. It is everyone within the organization who has to see how she or he can contribute to sustainability. Well, let's look at fleet management then huh? and your role as a fleet manager. So what is it that you do as a fleet manager? Whether you are a global fleet manager or a regional fleet manager or a country fleet manager, in the end, um, your role is to provide mobility services to your organization. Huh? And mobility services in the way that it meets the need of your organization. So people have to do work, whether it's um, managing specific uh, activities in refugee camps, whether it is being involved in development programs, whether it's monitoring of programs, whether it's meeting with other people. So there's a lot of needs of your organization that needs mobility. That is the role of the fleet manager to see how you can support the organization with the mobility needs that they need. Why the picture of the vehicle here? Because meeting that need is not about providing a vehicle to everyone who requests a vehicle. It is a mobility need and it doesn't mean that you have to provide a vehicle in all the times because in the end, the cleanest kilometer is the kilometer that you do not drive. The cleanest kilometer 
is the kilometer not driven? Sounds a bit like, yeah, yeah, right. Of course, I understand. But think about it. It's a mindset thing. This is a mindset issue. So if you really think every time as a fleet manager of how is this trip really needed? Do we really need a vehicle for this? It will change the way that you work and it will change the way that you work with people in your organization who are used to just requesting a vehicle at any given moment that they need a vehicle. The cleanest kilometer is the kilometer not driven. Think if you can use that, let's say as a ground rule, every time that you do your work, that you deal with people from programs, from ethnic people, everyone who needs a vehicle or asks for a vehicle, think about, is it possible to not drive this kilometer? So let's look at an, an approach that you can use uh, uh, to, if you look at sustainability. An approach that we use often is the avoid, shift and improve. And I will get into more details with some examples of what you can do in your role as a fleet manager uh, to use this approach and to support your organization in becoming more sustainable. So avoid, avoid driving kilometers, shift, shift to let's say alternatives that are more sustainable and in the end improve. If you really need to use a vehicle then improve the way that you use your vehicle. Let's look into the, the three ones. So the first one is related to the ground rule. The cleanest kilometer is the kilometer not driven. So avoid motorized transport or avoid the need for motorized transport. So this is about what's the system within your organization? Of course, it's about planning. How do you plan? How do you plan meetings? How do you plan trips? Uh, in a way that you avoid as much as possible to drive with a vehicle. It is also about vehicle sharing, and that can be trip sharing. Uh, so within your organization, you see if you have different requests from people for a vehicle, and if you can combine different trips into one trip. That means instead of two, you have one trip. And that is avoidance of one trip and avoidance of 50% of the kilometers driven. You can do that internally. It's a bit easier right, to combine trips internally to see if you can do it. But the next step is, of course, to do that with other organizations. Because as you all know, there are many situations where um, organizations, the people from different organizations have the same roots. Look at uh, capital airport. So pickups, drop-offs to airport. Many places, there are many vehicles going to the airport to pick up people, to drop off people. Uh, and in many of these cases, there's only one passenger in a vehicle, sometimes two. So there's a huge opportunity for organizations to work together, uh, to share trips, uh, to um, ensure that there are more people in every vehicle to avoid driving more kilometers. Uh, we, we've done some, um, uh, well, there's more organizations who do some testing with vehicle sharing. Uh, we actually are currently running a project, a vehicle sharing project running in Lebanon, and we just started in Central Africa as well. Uh, and we see that it has a huge benefit also on cost. Uh, only in Lebanon, we see that the average cost saving for organizations is about 25% of your cost, just, just, just by sharing their vehicles or sharing trips between different organizations. And a third example of don't drive, avoid, is online working. Uh, the, the, the COVID crisis learned all of us how to improve, um, let's say, uh, to improve the ability to really work online. And in many cases, online working can really, let's say, uh, ensure that you don't drive, you don't drive in a vehicle. If you meet with another organization, for example, sometimes you can do it online as well. And I do understand sometimes it's, it's good or even better 
to be together, but that doesn't mean for all meetings you need to be together. So it's also a way of thinking about, can we do some of the meetings online? Or can we say, if you drive to the office, can you do it out of rush hour? Because if the, if the roads are more empty, it reduces your time, but it also reduces fuel consumption because you have much smoother driving. Avoidance, that's the first one. Try to avoid kilometers as much as possible. So I'm really interested to see um, who of you already actively try to um, combine trips within your own organization. So let me see. Um, and I see that I, I have a small survey for you. So now you see a survey. Do you already actively try to combine trips within your organization? You might say, actually, no, I don't. Or sometimes, if it happens, uh, or do you actively always look at trips? And you say, well, I will always actively look for opportunities to combine trips. People are used to it. People are used to the fact that they don't have their own vehicle all the time. Um, so I, I always do it. And some people also sue at sea to uh, uh, answer in the chat as well. Um, I see some no's in the chat. And let's say, I'm very happy to see, uh, you see here, if I share the results, that majority of the people always look for opportunity to combine trips. That's great. Uh, and Frederic, I see you do it uh, through the, uh, the WHO transport booking system. That's great. Uh, I see Henry also said yes. Uh, that's really good to see. Uh, so, so these are differences, but I, I'm happy to see that the majority of the people say, yes, we always look for opportunity to combine trips. So that's internally within your own organization. So how do you do that with other organizations? Uh, so do you actively look for, with other organizations to share trips? The same as you could do internally, you can do it with other organizations as well. So you say, no, we don't do that, maybe sometimes, or yes, I really actively work with other organizations to share trips. Uh, and I see here, and let me wait a little moment. Um, yeah. And here you see that the majority of the organizations said, no, 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 we don't do that yet. Uh, and uh, let's say uh, a smaller number says sometimes, and a very small number says yes, we do that actively. I can only encourage you to really look for opportunities to do it with other organizations as well. I would say it's the easiest way to reduce kilometers in an effective way. Uh, much easier than to, for example, to replace your fleet with cleaner vehicles. Uh, vehicle sharing is the easiest way to substantially reduce your kilometers, therefore substantially reduce emissions, substantially reduce costs as well, and also to improve safety because there's less vehicles on the road, less kilometers on the road, therefore less safety risks. Okay. So it's good. Again, happy to see uh, that most of you actively work on um, uh, internal trip sharing um, and external trip sharing. There's still a lot to gain. Avoid. This is all about avoidance. But the first step, always try to avoid driving kilometers. The next one is shift. If you really need to go somewhere, if you said, okay, the people that you support really need to go somewhere, then see if you can do it with other transport modes who are more sustainable, public transport, trains, buses, for example. Um, if you can use those. Maybe in some cases, people can use a bicycle uh, or people can walk. And of course, it's all within the requirements related to safety. That's for sure. Safety and security is always a very strong, let's say, determinator of how, um, uh, what you can do. But at least it's good in your specific situation to see whether you can uh, use public transport 
or when he can walk or cycle. Yeah, and um, that's the second one, shift to more sustainable alternatives. Okay. If you still need a vehicle in the end, you try to avoid, you try to shift to a more sustainable alternative, um, then there's still some trips, some vehicles needed, and then really improve the remaining fleet. Many things that you can do there, of course, is right sizing and right profiling. Reduce the number of vehicles, if possible, related to the needs of your organization. We do know that in general, on average, fleets of organizations are about 10% oversized. And so really look at the number of vehicles that you have. Look at if all vehicles are being used or just standing idle in a parking lot somewhere not being used. And you can get rid of them because well, the costs are still there uh, and you don't need them. Right profiling, look at smaller vehicles. Uh, in many cases, uh, you can use a different type, a smaller vehicle that fits the purpose of the needs of your organization. Maintenance, we do know that maintenance and that's it in the broader sense, preventive maintenance, it's looking at tires, at tire pressure. And we know that maintenance, good maintenance, professional maintenance can ensure that you reduce your emissions by 10 to 15% compared to vehicles that are not maintained according to schedule uh, in the right professional way. Eco driving practices. Eco driving the same, also around 10 to 15% reduction of emissions by fuel consumption if you practice eco driving. And the last one, also very obvious one, is look at cleaner vehicles, whether it's uh, smaller vehicles already are better, um, but look at alternatives like hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles, different or Euro 3 vehicles instead of Euro 0 vehicles. So look at alternative vehicles that can serve the same purpose, but have less emissions. So avoid, don't drive, shift, to an alternative transport mode, which is more sustainable. And if you still have to use vehicles, then look how you can improve it. I'm looking at time and we started five minutes later. Um, so I take the liberty to, uh, let's say, um, continue for another five minutes after the half an hour. And I hope that it's all okay for you. So we'll have some time for questions as well. Yeah. So where do you start? Uh, to, uh, because there's a lot of initiatives that you can do. We have vehicle sharing, that's quite something, or right sizing or right profiling or moving to hybrid or electric vehicles. Is that, so, so how do you start? Where to start? Well, important is that you start um, and that you start small. And you don't know any, everything up front. You say, okay, let's test with a hybrid or electric vehicle. Let's test if people can, uh, let's say, if we can share some trips with our organization. And probably it will not work very well in the beginning. And it's okay to be not perfect. It's okay to be imperfect. But start, start somewhere, but start small. Uh, don't do it big or have a huge plan or a huge shift in your organization. Just start small somewhere. And most important is learn from what you do. So start small, learn from it, and then grow. You can think big. You can say, in the future, within five years, I want to have 20% of my fleet, of my countries, uh, of my fleet involved in vehicle sharing. Or... In three years from now, I want to have a reduction of my fleet uh, by 25%, or I want 25% of my fleet year three or higher. That's think big is, is, is a great way, but start small, learn from it. And see if hybrid or electric vehicles are really fit for purpose. Test it, learn from it. See if the vehicle sharing start with one route with two other organizations, just a route to the airport, for example, or the route to a camp, the routes which you know that a lot of organizations use, uh, and just work together. Start with it, learn from it, and then 
let's say, continue to grow all your initiatives. Okay, cool. Um, I will leave it here, my presentation, and see if there's any questions from your side. Uh, like I said, helpful if you use the, the, the Q&A mode. Um, and if um, you don't use it, it, it's in the chat, I can still see it as well. Let me see if there's some um, comments. In the questions as well. I see it. Benjamin. He says, let me show it on the screen. Some policies do not accept third party due to insurance policies. Yes. And it's probably specifically related to vehicle sharing. We know there's a lot of barriers, a lot of barriers related to vehicle sharing, whether it is indeed insurance policies, safety and security policies, um, communication policies, okay? you want to have the branding, uh, cost sharing uh, reasons. So there's a lot of reasons why people say, no, we can't share vehicles. And again, the only thing I can say here is if you really want it, if you really want to avoid driving kilometers and vehicle sharing is one of the easiest way to do it. And also there, start small, just start with some organizations in one route and see how it works and try to convince the organization that it's okay. Let's start informal um, and learn from it. And yes, there will be some barriers. Uh, so you will find, and we will send you uh, some links to some documents on our knowledge platform. One of them is uh, a, a, a guide for vehicle sharing. It was specifically drafted for uh, NGOs uh, because within the UN there was some initiatives. We started an initiative with NGOs as well, but it doesn't actually matter whether you are an NGO or UN. The barriers are in a lot of cases the same and the solutions also. So have a look at it. We will send you after this webinar the links uh, to, um, to uh, these documents. Okay. Benjamin, what would be the appropriate performance review periods for green or fleet performance to benchmark improvements? It depends. You know, if you really have like an, <clears throat> sorry, an objective like by 2030, we want to reduce our emissions by 20%, then I would say an annual review period is fine. If you start small with an initiative, whether it is, okay, I test a smaller vehicle or I test a hybrid or electric vehicle, or I do a test with vehicle sharing, then I would say a monthly review periods are important because you really want to monitor very closely what the impact of your initiative is. So it, it depends on, let's say, the kind of performance that you're looking for. Overall performance reduction of emissions, I would say uh, uh, annually, but shorter projects, learning projects, I would say definitely monthly to get a good overview of, of the impact of your initiatives and to, let's say, to adjust your initiative or to change your initiative in time if you see that it doesn't have the impact uh, that you would like to see. Henry, thanks for the uh, ASI tips. How possible is it to adopt shifts in our day-to-day -day official activities? This really depends, Henry, um, on your organization. And it also depends on people working. So there's, there, there will be two things. There will, one is your policies. There will be a lot of barriers in policies of organizations. It's unsafe to work, it's unsafe to use public transport, et cetera. That's one. You have to see, depending on the environment in which you operate, if it is safe and secure to walk or to cycle. So that's one thing. Secondly, are people willing to change their behavior? Are people willing to 
walk, uh, to walk to another office in the capital of a country, let's say for two kilometers, which is not that far, but some people will say, no, I'm not willing to do so. So you will have to deal with two types, your policies and your people. I think in general, it should be possible. And you really have to test internally how people respond to it. Uh, and and um, uh, if people are, let's say, able and willing to think with you about other alternative types of transport. Um, let me see if we have other questions. Just, I will take one more. Um, okay, I see one more here. Can it be, uh, you can explore the use of wafer forms to start with as you wait the harmonization of your policies to allow for ride sharing. I, I like that. Yeah, I really like that idea. This is sort of a, a, a very important way to overcome all the barriers and that let's just start. Start small, learn from it, at least do it. And it might not, you'd say, indeed, fit all the, por the policies. All the policies will not be aligned, but at least you can start somewhere. It's a great um, comment, Kennethy. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. We're done for today. Um, I hope it was useful uh, to you. Uh, the, uh, uh, the ASI avoid, don't drive if it's not needed. Try to avoid driving. That's the cleanest kilometer. It's always the kilometers you don't drive. Shift to more say sustainable transport modes. And if you still have to use vehicles, try to optimize it as much as possible. Right? Good, uh, uh, good maintenance, look at cleaner vehicles, look at the right profile of vehicles. Sometimes you might use smaller vehicles. There's a lot of ways you can do it. So avoid as a ground rule, because the cleanest kilometer is the kilometer not driven, shift or improve your remaining fleet. Thank you all uh, for today. Uh, like I said, we will send you uh, uh, some documents, some links to documents about vehicle sharing, about right sizing, about our um, fleet sustainability training, and last also about an, an e-learning module that ICRC uh, provided to the whole sector that's also about sustainable fleet management. Again, thank you very much. And hope to see you next week in our webinar. Bye-bye.